Natasha. Uh, I live in Slovenia. I am a mother of two and a grandmother of three. Uh, I live alone. My children are all grown up and live abroad. That needed to be checked because I had headaches. And uh, the uh, cyst disappeared, but this thing appeared right here in the middle of my forehead on a CT scan. It was quite terrific. It looked to me like, you know, there's some sort of mistake, you know, can't be. I mean, you can't have this in your head, can you? It's impossible. So what's next? I mean, I'm a problem solver, you know, just uh, what are you going to do about it? Uh, and so it was, must go come out. I said, OK, will you use anesthesia? <laughs> I said, yes, of course, we'll, uh, we'll use anesthesia. And slowly, bit by bit, I got the information about the procedure, and that was a big eye opener. Oh gosh, no, I can't do that. Having to go uh, under such a surgery, uh, it would stop my life as it is, and the quality of life. But my mother was quite casual about it. It was basically, you know, we found this, and how are we going to fix it? Um, so it was really. Um, more to do with the research around it, how to find the right or the best treatment for it. And uh, surgery, even at the beginning, seemed like a not the very best idea because of its invasiveness. So uh, she asked me to help her look into alternatives and uh, CyberNAF came up pretty early on, really. And uh, it was sort of the, the best treatment at the time, really, that we could find. Martin said he was concerned about if I had surgery to take this road down to surgery, what would the aftermath be, you know, will I be able to look after myself or not? I mean, this can greatly in fact affect his life, having an, a mother that can't like, take care of herself. Um, this is a huge thing. If you look at uh, the variety of tumors which occur in uh, patients, you can treat with a cyber knife malignant tumors with the same quality as benign tumors. And if you want to do a high quality, highly sophisticated radiosurgery wherever the tumor is in the body, the cyber knife is currently the technology of first choice. All meningiomas are treatable by CyberKnife, for example. Some tumors are too big, then surgery is needed. Sometimes we need a combined therapy of surgery and radiosurgery. Sometimes we need no therapy if the tumor, for example, is not growing. So it depends on the size, the location, the growth of the tumor, this every time has to be discussed individually. So for a typical cyber knife treatment planning, uh, what we do is we use all the available imaging information such as uh, computer tomography, MRT scans and uh, PET. We fuse all those image information together and uh, as a next step the MD, so the physician, will contour the treatment target, the tumor that needs to be treated. This is followed by uh, physical dose planning, so the medical physics team will create a treatment plan consisting of a multitude of beams that deliver dose to the tumor. And when this is all completed, there is a final discussion between MDs and the medical physicists uh, to decide if this uh, treatment plan is clinically acceptable. So it all just took about three days. Um, uh, we came here on, on the Monday and uh, it was just a quick visit um, and, a, and a CT scan that my mother had. Um, then on Tuesday was a day off for us and uh, today is the third day is the scan. So it was the, the actual procedure and so it was pretty pretty quick. I was at the back keeping an eye on the things as well as much as I could but uh, it was good that you can see what's going on inside and have a chat with the technician and all the monitoring that was it was necessary to assure that the accuracy was right. Well, we've uh, been treating thousands of patients over the last few years and uh, 
while we are doing this, we are also constantly monitoring the performance of the system. So we monitor accuracy and safety of the system on a daily basis. This is part of quality assurance done by the medical physicists. So we are very sure and very certain that this is an extremely safe device. Well, the most important advantage of CyberKnife is, is that it's an extremely accurate procedure. We are able to uh, treat a brain lesion with an accuracy of less than 0.5 millimeters, which is an exceptionally low value. So I read up about this precision that CyberKnife has, uh, less, than five, less than one millimeter, and I think that's very important. I mean, my brain is um, where I am, and it's very private. And, uh, you can't just let anything go in. Well, there's no side effects expected. There may be some. Um, I'm told that I will just get up and go home and continue with my life. <laughs> What's better than this? So we are one minute now after the treatment. How do you feel? I feel fine, thank you. Did you feel anything during treatment? Do you, do you have any sensations or? No, none at all. Nothing. No. All right. Just enhancement. And that's good. Uh, we can just test that. And um, before you leave, you can take 100 years old. Of course. <laughs> there is no other way. I I, I don't know how anybody would consent to having surgery after this. I, I, it's just inhumane, you know. I, I think that at this age uh, we should really spare people all the pain. And if it is available, this is available. So why put people through suffering, uh, through surgeries, painful and with all this uh, trauma uh, attached to it? If there's a treatment like this, painless, I can't understand. So, I mean, to me, it's hybrid or there's nothing. <laughs>